Welcome back to another episode of Story Behind the Story. This week, once again, I am joined by Andrew Wegley. We had the pleasure of being stuck together in Evansville, Indiana over the past week covering Northwest men's basketball and the end of their season as they reach the Elite Eight for the second time in three years. So, Wegley, we will just hop straight into it. You had the chance to write a pretty much week in review, um, made it on the front page of the Northwest Missourian. What an accomplishment for sports. <laughs> Got to throw that out there. Thank but you. <laughs> what was, you know, kind of walk me through your experience in Evansville. I could sit here and tell you mine, but walk so, me through yours. Yeah, so we, we as you know, we, we left Kansas City at, at 5 in the morning, I think, on Wednesday, and able to, or just to be able to get to Evansville, I think there was a, a 2 p.m. tip, or a 4 p.m. tip off that game, or, a, yeah, and we tried to be there by, by 2 or so. Um, so we, it was a long day, you know, driving there. We get there, we do the game. You know, you got to you write a game recap. That they won, obviously. They beat Mercyhurst in the in the uh, in the Elite Eight, and then next day, do it all over again with the Final Four. We stayed in a hotel, comfort in in Evansville. <laughs> uh, you know, then they went again, and then we had that day off. Uh, and, and we got thanks to Bearcat Sports, we got to do um, kind of a, a preview for the national tournament game uh, after they beat St. Anselm in the in the. Final Four, I guess you could call it, or the Elite Eight semifinal. So I wrote that day too, and then get up next day, national championship. They win that, you write about that, and we, we headed home. And then the one you put out, the recap you put out after the national championship, that one was, it was pretty good. All of them were. Thank you. Uh, but of course, that one was pretty good. Special to cap off the season on the right note. While you got some quotes in the locker room after the national championship, kind of talk about what that experience was like. Because not many people get the opportunity to go into a locker room after a national championship. Right. And all season, we, did, we didn't get to go in the locker room because we just would get a couple players to a press conference yeah. or we get them on the court. But this week with the NCAA, it's just, they kind of changed the rules for you, you get to go in the locker room after these, after these big games. So we got some locker room availability. Um, the, the first time we did it was after that semifinal when, when Joey Wiz was kind of questionable if he played the next day, and, and the scene in there was kind of somber. It was yeah. it was quiet. Uh, the day after the St. Anselm, it was it was kind of hyped. It was like, okay, you know, we might do this. And of course, after the national championship game, they were playing music, they were jumping around, they were they were uh, you know thrilled because they just won the national championship. So it was interesting. They kind of had a message written on the board that we were like, you know, what does that even mean? And they, they explained <laughs> to us it was a 21 Jump Street reference. So it was kind of a behind the curtain moment that we never would have would have got if we just had you know the, yeah. the normal cut and dry press conference and uh but yeah it was an interesting experience because you kind of get to see them in their own their natural environment so it was it was different and it was it was kind of insightful yeah and the quotes we got from there were a lot better than what you normally get at a press conference because like you said they are in their own natural environment more fun energetic and everything mm -hmm. especially after winning a national championship Absolutely. so you had to write all of these stories had to put all of this work in. What was the most interesting part of your week? Um, I don't. I think. I think it was interesting, kind of talking to them after that game. I mean, that's just a whole different level of emotions. Just being on the court yeah. with the confetti. Uh, I've obviously never done that before because um, I'm a sophomore and they just won the national championship for the first time in two years. Uh, but you know, that was that was very interesting. Um, just kind of seeing them before the game on on Friday at the double tree in the lobby when they, they had media availability for the for the preview. They all seemed kind of worn out, they kind of seemed tired. And I was like, you know, this is a this is a tired team. They'd 37 0 to that point, so they'd obviously played a lot of basketball, won a lot of games. But I think the the most interesting I would say is just kind of what we had to do afterwards in terms of writing the story because we, we were in that locker room. I think that whole celebration probably took an hour, close to an hour, yeah. if not at least an hour. So we go to the media room there at the Ford Center in Evansville. We start writing, and then a couple hours later, uh, by the time we're, we're doing stuff, maybe not even two, two full hours later, they came in and said, all right, we, we got to kick you out. You know, we, We're closing this place in 10 minutes. So we had to go to McDonald's in Evansville. You were there, uh, Joe Andrews, the managing editor, and then Tucker Franklin, the assistant sports editor. We were all kind of finishing up our stories putting everything together, putting on social media, and then driving home and getting back to Kansas City at three in the morning. So it was uh, quite the journalistic process that we had to yeah. go through, but I mean, it, it really felt like real journalism. Yeah, absolutely. This is gonna be it. Basketball season is over. It might be. So this could be it for the semester. Until next time, thank you, Wegley, for joining us. No problem. 
Northwest caps off a perfect season, and you found out about it by a story written in a McDonald's. That's going to wrap things up for this episode of Story Behind the Story. Make sure to check out Tucker Franklin's story as well about Trevor Hudgens and Diego Bernard, and of course, all of Andrew Wegley's stories from the week in Evansville. Thank you for watching Story Behind the Story, the KNWT Channel 8 YouTube exclusive.